Now, cars have massively improved in safety terms over the years, not just the barriers, but the car itself. And the way that the car protects the driver works in about three ways. Uh, first of all, let's have a look. So first of all, you have the monocoque that looks after the driver inside the car. And the monocoque basically covers the fuel tank. It goes all the way through the front of the car. And within that, that is the survival cell. That is where the driver is at their safest. And even in big accidents, that survival cell shouldn't be damaged at all by an accident. You have additional things looking after the driver here. You have the roll hoop and of course the halo frontal head protection now as well. So that really looks after the driver. But the problem is, is once the driver is in an almost solid structure, when they do finally hit something, you need something to absorb that load, to slow the accident down, protect the driver so that they don't have too high decelerations, which is really what causes the incidents. It's only then after that, that if the survival cell gets broken, then you start to get things like broken legs and bits and pieces. So it's these crash structures that are the most important. So there are effectively four sets on the car. You have the nose, uh, the frontal impact structure, as the teams like to call it. At the back, you have the rear impact structure, or the uh, rips, as sometimes the teams call it. And then you have the side impact protection, either side here of the cockpit, which helps the driver in a side impact. And then we'll come to looking at some of the padding that's inside the car as well. So let's look at these each individually. And we'll start off, which is probably the most common accident, is the driver going nose first into a barrier or another obstacle. Now we've seen lots of times these tested on track as a car will go off even into safer barriers, the nose will be impacted, particularly when it hits hard objects. But before the car can ever even run on circuit, this nose and the chassis have to be tested in a laboratory and crash tested into a solid object. This is a pretty aggressive, dynamic accident. The nose will hit the wall and then just start to peel back and peel back. And when you then go from this over one meter long nose, this is what you end up with. This is actually a crash tested nose. So you can see, first of all, there's not a lot of it left. There's about a meter of this has been squashed. And you can see this kind of banana peel effect of the carbon fiber plies peeling back, going inside the nose, going outside the nose, ripping both the outer skin and the inner skin apart, compacting into a very short shape. But as you can see from behind, the actual mounting face, which means that the chassis and the nose box of the car directly behind here, completely undamaged by the accident. So it shows just how much energy this nose can actually absorb while protecting. So it's only when you'd have a huge accident with a very solid object that it would go beyond this point and you would have danger of the, the footwell of the car being compromised. We haven't really seen that in Formula One. That's not the way that ten accidents tend to uh, act out. So the nose cone has been adding to Formula One for many years now in making the driver safe. Then we look at the other end of the car. Normally if a car has an accident, it will spin, it will go tail first into a barrier or another obstacle. So to continue to protect the driver, to decelerate the driver smoothly so they don't have that big G loading in, there is a significant rear impact structure. Now I have um, a mock-up one. This is just a 3D printed mock-up for when they're preparing the car pre-season. The real one is actually now slightly longer and it will be made from carbon fiber. Again, as I say, this one's 3D printed resin. You'll recognize this part because it's the bit that has the tail light at the end and it's the thing you see when the car goes away from you when you're watching on the TV. It connects to the back of the gearbox and just the same with the front impact structure, it will collapse inwards as it goes through its impact. Again, this is tested in both the laboratory and we see the you know, frequent accidents on the car. Now, because you've got quite a small cross section here, what teams do is not just have the carbon fiber and honeycomb skin around the outside, but they'll have webs and structures inside here to help decelerate that impact should the car go backwards into an accident. So this is an absolutely key piece of race car safety. But again, a car can go in any number of ways into barriers. So we'll then come up to the next one, which is the side impact. Now the side impact structures we've spoken about previously on Tech Talk because they affect the design of the side pod. So let's have a look at those. So these side impact structures, 
These are what we have sitting out the side of the cockpit here. So if you look at the Mercedes, for example, they're wrapped in that side pod wing. And you'll often see little bumps on the floor to show where these stick out. So you have four of these, one at the top, one at the bottom, both sides of the cars. And if the car should go into a barrier sideways, much like we saw with Max Verstappen, these are what would decelerate the car down to protect the driver in that side impact. And it's very important that we do this because obviously side head movements are really critical in terms of neck injuries. So what you have is a carbon fiber tube. Again, this is a 3D printed mock-up that we have here that bolts into the chassis. Now the design of this, when they first came in just after Carl Wendlinger's accident back in 94, uh, were down to the team's own design. Well, what has happened is to make things simpler, the teams and the FA decided that they would go to a standard shape of side impact structure. So what that happened is MANA designed this, Red Bull took the design on, further developed it, and that is now the specification. All of the teams will have this specification side impact structure. Now they can make it themselves, or Red Bull Technologies, which is the, the consulting arm of Red Bull Racing, will make them for you and sell them to you in a nice box that you mean you don't have to make them yourselves. But these have been an absolutely crucial part of driver safety as the drivers go in sideways, as really was shown quite clearly by the accident at Silverstone last year with Max Verstappen when he went into the barrier at high speed. And this, along with the rest of the structure at the side of the car, really protected him from what could have been a very dangerous accident you know, a few years ago. So they are the crash structures. So what these will do will protect the driver. It will decelerate the driver down as much as possible. And that's great because the driver will be sat there in their seat, strapped in with the six point harness. So the driver's torso really can't move, but the driver's legs, the driver's head can still move around. And this creates problems because the legs can rattle around inside the footwell and the head can rattle around against the cockpit sides. And again, when we look back to Carl Wendling's accident, this was some of the things that the teams thought about, the FA thought about, Peter Wright did his investigation and decided to come up with this horseshoe headrest. So let's have a look at that. Sits here inside the cockpit and you often see the driver take them off at the end of the race. Now, this is really interesting. Um, they've changed a little bit over the years. So you've got 100 millimeters of padding at the side and at the back of the headrest to protect the driver in terms of the head going backwards and their head going from side to side. Now, the outer section of this is made from carbon fiber and Kevlar and it, it, it is quite flexible and although it's carbon it's not really going to slow down the, the driver's head it's not going to have any problems in that respect but what will happen in the real race car is they're filled with this sheets of foam and it's a very special foam it's called comfort foam and it's a non-newtonian uh, type of foam so if you squeeze it gently it's very soft and it's a bit like memory foam you may have on your bed or um, you know clothing and stuff like that but if you punched it it suddenly becomes very stiff and very resistant. So when the driver's head does hit the side of the cockpit, it will actually slow the driver's head down in a very controlled way. And it's really important that it does so. Now this foam has to work really well, but it's very temperature sensitive. So there are actually two types of foam that the drivers have to use. Now you'll see before any session coming up on the FIA data screens, it will say, what the ambient temperature is and the color of foam. There's a blue foam and there's a pink foam. And depending on the temperature, the teams will have to fit the correct foam headrest to the car so it's working perfectly to protect the driver in an accident. But the foam protection inside the cockpit goes further than just that. And it's largely unseen by us fans. Down in the footwell of the car, there is this M-shaped piece of foam. It's the same comfort foam, although it doesn't have to have the temperature constraints that the headrest does. And it goes down inside here. So it goes from the cockpit footwell entry here all the way down to where the driver's ankles are so that their feet will extend forwards to touch the pedals. And what this will do is previously, the cockpit footwell area would have suspension, steering, wishbone mountings, all exposed and when the driver had an accident, even a light accident, their feet rattling around would either be injured or at worst broken by the objects inside the cockpit. Now they started to clean up this area, but then they've added this foam section here. So protect the driver. So not just from insides of the cockpit, but also the steering column, which runs down the middle. So your driver's knees are either side of that sort of M shape there. 
this is one of the kind of the unsung heroes. You'll see it from the onboard cameras. You'll just see that little bit of foam sticking out into the cockpit entry. So that is what that part there is. Again, really helps to protect the driver. There is a little carbon fiber mounting just to hold it all in place. And some drivers even go further to have a foam piece going down the middle to brace their knees against rather than having knee pads. So again, have a look if you have a look into an empty cockpit and look for details like this. Formula One continues to develop safety, both in terms of barrier safety at the circuit, the structure of the car and the padding and the environment inside the cockpit. Formula One can never be safe enough. There'll always be something else the FIA and Formula One can do to protect the drivers, to protect the cars and to help us continue enjoying the sport in the future.